Hello, I'm Sir Michael, and you're watching Valenzuela Facebook Live for English 6, your online classroom, streaming directly to your home from our city's pride, Valenzuela City School of Mathematics and Science. Today, we are going to revisit the most essential learning competency, make connections between information viewed and personal experiences, EN6VC-4D-1.4. With a subskill focus on determine tone, mood, and purpose of the author, with the following codes EN6RC 1C 6.5, 6.6, 6 6 and 6.7, 7. Before we start, you need to comment your name, school, and your grade and section down in the comment box for your attendance. I will be giving you 30 seconds to do it. Time starts now. So, if you're ready, get your paper and pen, sit up straight, listen carefully, and let's start our class today. My dear learners, back in week 5 of the first quarter, we have discussed the topic of determining the tone, mood, and purpose of the author. Do you still remember it? That's great. I hope that everyone still does. Now, if you can still remember the topic, let us try to answer the following questions and see if you still know that topic. For your directions, simply choose the letter of the best answer and comment the letters below. Are you ready? Let us now start. For number one, which word shows the purpose of an author in writing? Is it A? Happy, B. Excited, C. Entertain, D. Arrogant. Five seconds. Go. The correct answer is letter C. It is to entertain. Number two. Directions to a particular location, a recipe, an instruction on how to play Monopoly, and are all examples of writing for which purpose? A. Describe B. Inform C. Entertain D. Explain 5 seconds, go! The correct answer is letter B. It is to inform. Number 3. Which word shows the mood in the statement? Oh no! What did you do to my cream? Do you know how much you wasted? Is it letter A. Angry B. Arrogant C. Excitement Or letter D. Happy Five seconds. Go! The correct answer is letter A. Angry. For number four, what is the tone of a writer wrote about COVID-19 pandemic? Is it letter A. Disappointed? Letter B. Excited? Letter C. Confused or letter D, worried. Five seconds, go. The correct answer is letter D, worried. And for our last number, we have what purpose does the author use when he wants to convince the reader or influence the reader to do something? Is it letter A, inform? 
Letter B, persuade. Letter C, express. Letter D, entertain. Five seconds. Go! The correct answer is letter B. It is to persuade. How many points did you get? That's amazing that you can still remember our past lessons. Let us now revisit our lesson in determining the tone, mood, and purpose of the author. Let us start with the tone when it comes to writing. Tone simply refers to how the author feels towards the subject or towards something. The way the writer makes use of tone can tell you a lot about the writer's attitude or relationship toward their subject matter and what they are trying to say about it, as well as the effect they are trying to create for their reader. Tone can either be positive, negative, or neutral. Positive tones include cheerful, playful, joyful, excited, optimistic, and many more. Negative tones, on the other hand, include accusatory, bitter, harsh, sarcastic, angry, and many more. Neutral tones include formal, serious, informative, humble, sincere, and many more. But even then, other tones fall under sad tone. Some of them are bleak, gloomy, resentful, and many more. Let us have an example and see how tone is conveyed in a text. Let us read. I never wanted to see that movie, but my annoying little sister kept pestering me. Eventually, her whining wore me down and I gave in, but that waste of a movie really destroyed my Saturday. Now question, what is the tone of this text? Is it cheerful, bitter, or excited? That is correct. It is bitter. Second question, which words or phrases give us clues about the tone used? Look for the words. The clue words are annoying, pestering, waste, and destroyed. Let us look into another example. Bursting through the door, the flustered mother screamed uncontrollably at the innocent teacher who gave her child an F. Question, what's the tone of this text? Is it happy, relaxed, or angry? If your answer is angry, that is correct. It is angry. Which words or phrases give us clues about the tone used. The clues are phrase, uh, bursting through the door, the word screamed, and uncontrollably. How about the next one? I guess I'll just go home and sit down on the couch by myself. Sigh, Justin. Question. Is the tone cheerful? Angry or depressed? The correct answer is depressed. How do we know that Justin is depressed? We know that because Justin sighed and just wanted to go home and sit down by himself. Mood is the feeling you get while reading a story. This could be happiness, sadness, darkness, anger, suspicion, loneliness, or even excitement. 
It can be thought of as the atmosphere or overall feeling of a piece of writing or literature. Let's check this example. The door swings open to reveal all of my family members standing around the Christmas tree. The lights are twinkling and the fireplace is roaring with a warm fire. Everyone is singing Christmas carols as the snow falls quietly outside the window. Question. What did the passage make you feel? What was the overall feeling? Is it A. Romantic? Letter B. Cozy or familiar? Letter C. Gloomy or lonely? Or letter D. Scary or suspenseful? The mood of the passage is cozy or familiar. It's because the atmosphere about Christmas, the Christmas tree, the lights twinkling, and the fireplace roaring with a warm fire, and everyone singing Christmas carols, all of these, they relay the cozy or familiar mood to us, the readers. Another example. There was a plenty of food, and the music was playing. Everybody was having a good time. Question. What is the mood of the text? Is it happy, bored, or gloomy? Five seconds. Go. The correct answer is happy. Great job. Next. It was dark and gloomy. The dogs were howling in the night. What is the mood of the text? Is it afraid, angry, or thankful? Five seconds. Go! The correct answer is afraid. Very good. For the last example, the door swings open to reveal a Christmas tree alone in the middle of the room, sparkling with hundreds of lights. Silence greets me as I glance around the, around the room. My family has gone and I am left alone with my thoughts. What is the tone of the text? Is it angry, happy, or sad? Five seconds. Go! Correct answer is sad. Now, let us talk about the difference between the tone and the mood. Let us look at this Venn diagram to illustrate their difference. The tone is writer-centered. It is the attitude a writer takes towards the subject or the reader. The mood, on the other hand, is reader-centered. It is influenced by the setting. It is the overall feeling or atmosphere created by a work of literature. But what we need to remember is that both of them convey an emotion or emotions through words. Okay? And finally, we have the purpose of the author. An author's purpose is his reason for or intent in writing. An author's purpose may be to inform the reader, entertain the reader, or to inform the reader. Let's talk about to inform. When an author's purpose is to inform the reader, us, the readers, he is teaching or giving information to us, the reader. For example, this stone art or the Arkong Bato found along MH Del Pilar Street was built by the Americans in 1910 and served as the boundary between Rizal and Bulacan province. Before the existence of MacArthur Highway and Ennex, Valenzuela was already the gateway to the north, albeit with MH Del Pilar being the main road to the northern Luzon. Today, Arkong Bato marks the boundary between Barangay San Tulan in Malabon and the arch namesake Barangay Arkong Bato in Valenzuela. Now, the text informs us 
about the history of Arkham Bato, a famous landmark in the city of Valenzuela. Another example is this one. Located near the Our Lady of Fatima University, the National Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima is the center of the Philippine Fatima Apostolate. It was declared a tourist site in 1982 by the Department of Tourism. And most recently, it was declared a pilgrimage site by the Diocese of Malolos. The text informs us about the National Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima. Another example, dubbed as the Venezuela's best kept secret, the Tagalog fishing village in Venezuela City was constructed to preserve the fishing site. It lies beside a 1,300 meter boardwork, light post, and fence adorned with statues of fish that can be caught there. Various activities are also being offered in the area. Now, can you guess what this text informs us of? What is it all about? Yes, it is all about the Tagalog Fishing Village. Very good. Now let's talk about the other purpose, to entertain. When an author's purpose is to entertain the reader, the author writes to tell you a story that you will enjoy. The key word here is for the readers to enjoy. Texts that aim to entertain the readers usually goes like this. Once upon a time, in magical kingdom, there lived a great hero. He was about to set out on a dangerous quest. Another example, a story about three friends that go on a crazy adventure. Or a book of over 1,000 knock-knock jokes. All of these are to entertain, written to entertain the readers. The last one is to persuade. When an author's purpose is to persuade the reader, the author writes to convince you to do something or to believe what they are saying. Example, every house should have a dog. They are cute, loyal, and will protect your house. Another example, Children should not be allowed to go outside at night. It is not safe for the kids to roam around. They should either be resting or studying in preparation for the next day's class. Or the last one, wearing a mask is a must. To protect ourselves from the viruses around us, we should be accustomed to wearing masks. They can help filter the air we breathe in. Now, to check your learning, let's answer this what I can do on your module. Directions. Read the following short paragraphs. Identify the purpose of the writer by answering it with the letter P for to persuade, E to entertain, or I to inform. Type your answers in the comment box. Number 1. Fried chicken is my favorite. It can be with spaghetti or rice, with gravy or ketchup, or all of it. That will be nice. By John Denzel. Was it? Five seconds. Go. The correct answer is letter P, to persuade. The author aims to make you crave that fried chicken. Number two. Although humans are omnivores, meaning to say eating both plants and animals, many people choose not to eat meat and fish. Those who don't eat or use any product made from animals, including eggs, dairy products, and honey, are known as vegetarians or vegans. Hey, okay, so why is it? Five seconds, go. The correct answer is letter I. It is to inform. The author aims to inform you about some human beings being vegetarians and what they are. Number three. It's time to junk junk food. Tired, crabby, or unfocused in class, 
it could be the food you are eating. The lack of healthy and tasty school lunches selection has recently become a problem in almost every elementary and high school across the nation. Most schools sell junk food to students and I think this is wrong. There are many good reasons to remove junk food from school menus and creating a healthier student body is number one. Junk food should be taken out of school menus because they affect your body and mind in negative ways. What is it? Five seconds, go! The correct answer is letter P, to persuade. The author aims to persuade people to avoid eating junk food. Let's go with number four. Joe had been fishing for two hours without a single bite. Suddenly, there was a nibble at the end of his fishing line. Just then, there was a sharp yank on the line. Joe fell overboard and landed headfirst into the water. Joe and his friends laughed and laughed. What kind of text is it? Five seconds, go! The correct answer is letter E, to entertain. The author made us use of the anecdote about Joe's fishing experience. Number 5 It's new, it's refreshing, it's slurpy soda. If you drink this soda, you'll jump higher, run faster, and be smarter. Try one today. 5 seconds, go! The correct answer is letter B, to persuade. Now, the author here aims to promote slurpy soda to consumers. How many points did you get? That's great. Type your scores in the comment box. Now, as a summary to our lesson for today, tone refers to how the author feels towards the subject or towards something. Tone is writer-centered. Tones can either be positive or negative or neutral. It is the attitude of a writer takes towards the subject or the reader. On the other hand, mood is the feeling you get while reading a story. Mood is reader-centered. It is influenced by the setting. It is the overall feeling or atmosphere created by a work of literature. But both of them can convey an emotion or emotions through words. An author's purpose is his reason for or intent in writing. An author's purpose may be to inform the reader, entertain the reader, or to inform the reader. And so, those are the tone, mood, and author's purpose. I hope that you have learned a lot. If you have reached this part of the lesson, please press the heart button to tell us that you're still there. Great! Now, we are now on the part of the live stream where I will answer some of your questions and I will give you one minute to type your questions in the comment box. Please do not ask questions that are not related to our topic today. One minute starts now.
We are now going to read some questions from the comment section and I'll try to answer them for you. And the question for today, how can you figure out the tone in a story? Great question! To figure out the tone in a story, the reader must read and understand the story first. He must identify the words used inside the story. They will describe what is happening in the story. Just like in our example a while ago, some words or phrases used in a text can give out clues for the tone. One effective way that I like to do when I'm trying to understand the situation is trying to put myself in the shoes of the characters. Ask yourself about the feeling you get from the description of the situation. And from there, you can deduce the tone, the mood, and even the purpose of the author. Thank you for your question. Now, I would also like to thank all of you for your participation and all your questions. Just keep them coming. Remember that learning starts by asking questions. As always, tomorrow is your follow-up discussion with your subject teacher. Please be there tomorrow. To all my fellow English teachers watching, the link for my PowerPoint presentation is listed on the board. Just use your debit email address to gain access to the file. I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson. Tune in again for the next live stream of the Valenzuela Live for English 6. As our Secretary of Education, Leonor Briones mentioned, everyone, Please say it with me. In any situation, learning must continue. Stay home, stay safe, and God bless us all. This is Sir Michael, your live streaming teacher for Valenzuela Live, saying thank you and have a great day.